welcome. You're watching our English news program with me, Waris Mohammed. These are the stories making headlines. Vice President of Somaliland attends the opening of a new restaurant in the capital. Somaliland government delegation in Manchester meets the Somaliland Manchester community. European elections day three. Polls open in Latvia, Malta and Slovakia. Vice President of Somaliland, Abdelrahman Abdullah Ismail Sayli'i, cut the ribbon of a new restaurant in the capital city, Hargeisa. The Vice President of Somaliland, Abdelrahman Abdullah Ismail Sayli'i, unveiled a new restaurant in the capital city, Hargeisa. The event had in attendance the Minister of Livestock, the Minister of Industries, the Vice Minister of Information, and the Manager of Somaliland National Television, Khadr Hassan Ali Ghaz in addition to other notable figures. Vice President Abdurrahman Abdullah Ismail Sayli took the podium and expressed his joy at being present for this event and praised the owner of this restaurant for investing in his country, stressing the importance of encouraging all Somalilanders to invest in their motherland and take part in the developmental process. The Vice President elaborated on the role citizens play in building the nation and renovating crucial sectors in the country and called for more collaboration from citizens to catalyze the process of progressing Somaliland. On the other hand, other keynote speakers gave speeches emphasizing the need for more participation in the private sector by all Somalilanders, both inside and outside the country. Somaliland House of Elders held a session to discuss the effective mission of the Somaliland Ministry of Interior. The Somaliland House of Elders held a discussion session on the effective mission of the Somaliland Ministry of Interior. This session was chaired by the first deputy of the Somaliland House of Elders, Saeed Jama Ali. This assembly was held only on focusing on the contributions of Somaliland Minister of Interior on the ongoing programs throughout the parts of the nations. Most of the members of the House agreed on the effective role the minister and elaborated on the accomplished goals of the minister. The first deputy of Somaliland, House of Elders, speaking at the event, sent his, appreci his appreciation to the Somaliland community in Sheffield for their role toward the international relation of Somaliland. Mr. Saeed Jama Ali also congra congratulated Somaliland Ministry of Interior for the great role they played on exchanging they played on enhancing internal politics of the nation. Members of the Somaliland diaspora in Sheffield also attended the session on the congratulating the government of Somaliland for their good governance system they managed to develop throughout the nation. Conclusively, the members of Somaliland House of Elders rewarded reward certificates of appreciation and seven active members of the Sheffield community that took part of the re recent recognition of Somaliland by Sheffield City Council and the community members acknowledged and showed the gratitude toward the government of Somaliland. Somaliland delegation consisting of cabinet ministers and governmental officials currently in Manchester for work-related trip met with Somaliland diaspora community in Manchester. The Minister of Information, Culture and National Guidance made a speech at the event where he praised the diaspora's involvement in Somaliland's ongoing developmental process. The Minister highlighted their key role and contributed to Somaliland's peace and economic process. The Mayor of Arigabo, who also spoke at the event, encouraged them to further donate more funds for the construction of the long road that links Togder with Sanag region. Parliamentarian Abdurrahman Tanyale praised their effort of organizing the 18 May celebrations and he urged them to follow Sheffield's footsteps to obtain the international recognition. Chairman for Environmental Research Agency held a press conference at his office and spoke about the importance of preparing against natural disasters. The Chairman of Environmental Research Agency held a press conference at his office and spoke about the importance of preparing against natural catastrophes. He urged Somaliland's government to raise awareness on the importance of being prepared in case of any natural disaster such as droughts, which is a condition we usually encounter in Somaliland. He stated that keeping food supply in store helps in the cases of droughts. 
The chairman of the Environmental Research Agency, Dr. Mohamed Musa Awale, further elaborated on some of the natural disasters that Somaliland can possibly face, especially during rainy seasons, such as floods, and stated that the government should assist should assist in moving families who are residing in areas near valleys to protect them from any possible floods. Dr. Mohammed also spoke about the importance of having more than one headquarter per city for firefighters in case of fires to save lives. He eventually praised the government of Somaliland for assisting the people residing in the eastern regions who often face droughts and other such issues. The mayor of Ainabo district, Ahmed Qani Abdihachi, and head of Ainabo local municipality, Umar Mahmoud Musa, took part in an event held for a football competition sponsored by Somtail winners for the 18 May tournament. The mayor of Agaba, Ahmed Qani Abdihachi Yusuf, took part in an event held for a football co competition sponsored by Somtail during the 18 May celebrations. The Ministry of Sports, Youth and Tourism and the head of Sonyo organization spoke at the event. This football event is usually part of the May 18 celebrations which is held annually and he urged the diaspora of the region to help build a stadium which has been left unconstructed. There were four teams that took part in the competition with the winners finally receiving their medals or honours from Somtel. The Mayor of Agaba and the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Tourism handed over certificates and medals to the winners of the competition. Representing the female organization, now, Amina Adam Noor and the Chairman for Somtel spoke about the importance of this football competition and the need for more of these kinds of competition to be held for the youth of the area. Youth and other people are finally, at the conclusion of the event, Recognition was provided to Somaliland National Television, the female organization NOW and Sonyo for the contribution made towards youth engagement to keep them towards youth engagement. Hawadle Stadium Committee organized dinner event to publish and finalize a new code of conduct. The event was attended by officers from the Lado Police Station, members from Somaliland Parliament, and Sheikh Adan Siro. The chairman of the committee who first spoke at the event expressed his thankfulness for Sheikh Adan Siro's support and commitment in supporting youth in any developmental project in Somaliland and he stated that he was the first person who pledged to contribute to Hawadle's rehabilitation project. Other speakers at the event praised the implementation of this project and encourage the youth to focus on developing their country rather than migrate into foreign countries and pay more attention to the ongoing developmental process in Somaliland. And now for the international headlines in detail. Saturday marks the penultimate day for Europe to decide on who it wants in charge and voting continues into a second day in the Czech Republic while Latvia, Malta and Slovakia and the French overseas territories will also head to the polls. At the start of the day three, up to 90 million of the 388 million eligible could have cast their vote in the largest democratic exercise outside of India. But unlike India, which saw an impressive turnout of 66%, the East European elections had a turnout of just 43%. The number of voters could play into the hands of anti-EU parties, who have seen a rise in support since the economic and financial crisis struck. One of the countries most affected by the crisis, Ireland only recently exited its EU IMF bailout. Surveys indicate that trust in the European institutions is 23 percentage points lower than before the rescue plan was implemented. Thai military detains former Prime Minister Yingluck Shinawatra among dozens of politicians held after being summoned to a military base following Thursday's coup.
Thailand and its former Prime Minister Yingling Shinawatra and dozens of prominent politicians have been detained by the military a day after it took control of government. Yingling and Niwatatorum, her temporary replacement, were among the 39 prominent figures who on Friday reported to a military facility in Bangkok. A Thai military spokesman who gave his name as Colonel Ferrachon told reporters that all those who had reported to the pace had been taken into detention. We are looking after them very well. They are all under detention. We want them to talk and give them some time to relax. They are not together at the moment, he said. However, he could not confirm their location is. The Rotary's news agents quoted another senior military official as saying, Yigling's sister and brother-in-law were among those being held. The two relatives have held top political posts. We will do so for not more than a week, that would be too long. We just need to organize matters in the country first, said the officer. Thailand's Army Chief General Parayuth Chan Ocha seized control of the government on Thursday, two days after he declared martial law. He said the military had to restore order and push through reforms after six months of political turmoil. The military declared a curfew from 10 p.m. until 5 a.m., suspended the constitution and detained some politicians. Rifle protests campus were ordered to disperse. Meanwhile, the United States on Friday suspended 3.5 million in aid, a third of its military assistance to Thailand, and urged the immediate restoration of civilian rule, a return to democracy, and obviously respect for human rights during this period of uncertainty, State Department spokesperson Maria Huff said. Yenglak was removed from office on May 70th after the country's constitutional court ruled she abused her power by removing a civil servant to benefit a relative. Yingling was proceeding of an interim government after she dissolved the lower house of parliament in December in a failed attempt to defuse six months of anti-government protest. A planned election was disturbed and then annulled. That's all the news for now. Thanks for watching. Until tomorrow, goodbye.